celebrities you can say who have, have shot for um which nobody knows I've shot for and I can't even say I've shot for yeah so have you ever seen a celebrity pass out at a wedding yes have you ever had um celebrities uh you know not pay you on time yes the bride was caught making out with one of the creative people on the shoot so the 7 year old kid came in and stole a fokker or diamond necklace from the mandap you can see the kid so then the police have come to my room in the middle of the night and they're banging on my door hi vishal hi bani welcome to after hours i have to say that uh, one you look Really cool. Are you? So you. that's extremely fashionable. What are Delhi think, designers? I think I think you're possibly one of our most fashionable guests so far. Hi. <laughs> and also that, um, of course, I think we've all kind of seen weddings through your lens and literally speaking. And it's such a pleasure to meet you in person. Thank you. Well, you'll make a beautiful bride. It's one of the first things I've said. So this <laughs> is like a good way of breaking the ice for when you get married. Thank you. Thank you. Um, you know. we of course uh, did a little bit of research and i think the first time that i um, heard of you or heard of the wedding filmer i think was um, perhaps you did uh, dia mirza's uh, wedding and at the time that you know became really popular but i think before that we realized that you worked uh, with sharukh khan for 10 years i did that was his creative director yeah tell us a little about that experience so i was a 20 year old boy from london i went i i I'm born in ghana And okay. then I moved to London to study. And How I did interesting! All my secondary school. I dropped out of college to move to India for the first ever time to work with Shah Rukh. Wow! I basically wrote him this long emotional email, um, and then I came and and he needed someone like me at the time. I came to India and I was my charming self. I put a big smile on my face and I was very eager, and something clicked for him and I guess I got the job. And then I started working on movies with him for ten years. And when you're twenty one, you're very resilient. Yeah. Um and Bollywood is very harsh. But I was just like starry eyed and happy to be there and just grateful every day and I didn't care what I was eating, where I was sleeping, what I was doing. Yeah. My parents wondered what was wrong with this boy. Um but then I made it work and it was the best 10 years of my life. He's one of the finest editors I know. Yeah. Um so I learned editing from him. Um so so I had three mentors when I worked there for the first few years. There was Shah Rukh himself who was hands on. He's one of the finest directors I know. A very fine editor, and a very charming man as well. Of uh, course, of course. And then I learned filmmaking and shot breakdown and how to get shit done um, from Farah Khan. Interesting. Um, she was amazing. She was like a powerhouse of a woman. I just never knew that that is how films could be made with such force and such grace and such. She's cool. She's a cool woman. Yeah. Um, and then I learned how to break every filmmaking rule I've ever learned from Santosh Sivan, who was. This a cinematographer and director. He made a film called Ashoka. Yeah. And right before that, he had made another amazing film called Terrorist that had won awards in Cannes. It was, I think, India's first ever film that won award, but it won an award in Cannes then. Uh, he'd break rules, and my first day on shoot, he was spinning the camera and like lighting fire to it and doing all sorts of things you shouldn't be doing with the camera. But the visuals were like stunning. Yeah. But but how did you go from there to what you're doing now? Give us like the story. So when you're working with Shah Rukh, you're very spoiled because he's such a good actor. Um, he knows his lines really well. I I do brand ambassadorship now for cameras and stuff. So now I have to do ads once in a while, and I always need a teleprompter. And then I go back to how did he do it because he did his mark. And then you work with other actors, and you just don't like doing it anymore. Yeah. Um. I think in 2010, I was getting married for the first time. Um. And my ex-wife wanted a wedding video. At the time, and back then, wedding videos were those video wala guys who would shoot. So I was like, people eating, <laughs> people eating, and I, I know my sister's wedding video was five hours of DVD hmm. footage. Um, five hours of DVD, nobody watches it ever. Yeah. The brief to the video guy from my mother was, I want to see everybody coming and who comes to the wedding. So um, make sure you capture that. So the guy stood in the entrance and shot everyone coming. and said i got everyone's face so yeah. that was the main agenda for him um uh, when i was getting married to her i didn't really want that wedding video and we didn't it was a small wedding we didn't have space for so many people to stay um so i said i will shoot it myself how did you like firstly how did you think that you could do it given I that did. of course you I actually had do. a camera at the mandap <laughs> i shot little bits of her entry during when she was dancing at the sangeet i shot little bits of it 
I gave the cameras to my friends who are also cinematographers and all from Bollywood. It's so mighty courageous, I must say. It was <laughs> to, fun. To think that, you know, you could pull this off at your own wedding. I started getting excited about the visuals even then. I remember like thinking how pretty it would look with all those bouquets and, you know, she looked pretty and the, the, the outfits and everyone would be happy. And I was getting excited about pulling those visuals because I was very new to cinematography yeah. myself. I was more directing when I was working with Shah Rukh, So... It was an exciting time, there were new cameras, technology was moving really fast, you could do some wonderful things with small cameras. Uh, and that's how the first film was bought. I, mm. I cut it and while cutting it, I felt so much joy while doing it and I could feel my heart racing and something felt right. Um, there was also a shotgun wedding. Mm. So she was pregnant and I was having a child coming and I was like, I need to do something serious <laughs> now and I'm waiting for a film to happen for me and I was like this is not going to happen now if it happens because Shah Rukh was making Rawan yeah. and he's like you finish Rawan then we'll talk about the film you want yeah. to make and like I didn't have the luxury of waiting that long yeah. now and spending a, like you know when you do a film you, you don't you're not at home and if my son was being born I wanted to be there and yeah. I wanted to so I decided to quit um, and start a company much to everyone's chagrin. No one got what I was doing. They were just like, what is wrong with you? Yeah. Why would you leave this amazing yeah, job? Yeah, you were thriving. You um, know, sort of... Because I was also at the peak of my uh, yeah. of my career at that time. I was about to make a film. Zoya and Rima had written the script and it was, it was coming out to be really... It was interesting. Shah Rukh had said yes. Priyanka had said yes. And I thought, okay, this is going to be a blockbuster. Yeah. I'm really happy it didn't happen. Hmm. And I could do this instead. Yeah. Because I got to spend time with my son. I got to build this from scratch. Yeah. Um, and in the beginning, for the first two years... No Indian ever hired me. I was only doing white people weddings. Really? Indians didn't understand it. They would be like, like, you know, they thought it's a movie. They, but it's like, haan, lekin, ka video hai. And I'm like, this is a video. Like, nah, lekin. So they did, I, and I couldn't understand. I couldn't sell it to them. I was not a salesperson. Um, so I, I ended up doing weddings for foreigners who would come. I did a Japanese wedding. I did a South Korean wedding. All married, marrying Indians. Yeah. I did a, I did a, Spanish marrying an Indian, I did a Jewish boy, I did a French boy. Um, so all sorts of these nice, cute, beautiful, ethereal. Yeah. And they were nice because then they were, there were speeches and there were vows and there were yeah. toasts and you know, there was a walk down the aisle and there's a string quartet. So enough material to make a film that looks Correct. beautiful and get excited about. Um, and then there was my first Indian wedding, which was my very close friend was getting married. He was an AD on honeymoon travels. Um, this movie that I worked on it. He's like, I want my wedding video to look like yours, you know. But I'm like, yeah, but you're not having a small wedding like mine. You're having a big Punjabi wedding with like yeah. three days of like Mehndi, Haldi, Sangeet wedding, you know, Bidai reception, the whole, the works. So I was like, I'll try. So then I went, prepared to shoot a big wedding. So I had a crew. I put together some friends and we took some really cool cameras and we did our homework about traditions and music and I composed a song for him. Um, and we shot this wedding like a, like fiends hmm. you know we used slow motion cameras for the first time ever on a wedding we used a drone on the wedding we used like all these like we and this is what year 2012 when this it's was not very new it had not existed yeah it, it didn't exist there. at the time um and when this video came out it, it went so viral that i had to set up before this i was working from my bedroom it was like, I was, I was also directing ads for many companies mm. and weddings was just like a small little project that I was starting, mm. but I was very excited about. Yeah. In 2012, when I finished this film and I put it out, um, I had to literally get an office, an office overnight. I had to hire a sales team overnight to just answer calls because the phone was ringing nonstop. No, Suddenly people understood that an Indian wedding could be like a movie. Yeah. Um, and, and isn't that the goal anyway, right? I think as Indians, we're obsessed with the movies. So A groom once said it to me. He said that, so I was like, why? What are you going to do with this memory? Why do all of this celebration? Like you went to, it was the first time I was filming in a place like Bali. Hmm. And it was again 2013, 14. And they had the works and musicians flying and they had sets built. And I'm like, why all of this? And he says, for me, this is, we've worked so hard. We've made so much money. We've done so many cool things in life. This is my night. This is my Oscar night. This is yeah. my Filmfare Award night. Yeah. This is for me to celebrate, not just me, but everything my father's done, everything my, my yeah. friends have done for me, everything my, my wife is going to do. Um, and it's an exciting time and I want it to be, yeah. I want to feel like Shah Rukh Khan today. So it's like, why not? Is and I think weddings know? have evolved so much, I think in the last decade and a half, because 
I don't know if back in the day we used to have these Sangeet performance extravaganzas and you know these like really elaborate bridal entries and stuff no. like that. I you created know. a monster. Uh, yeah, I think I think we have to hold you responsible and accountable for this. I think uh, so <laughs> much of uh, just the money that people are spending on weddings. <laughs> I what think started it, out as trying to be unobtrusive and trying to be yeah. beautiful has become this. Mega now. event. Now and now everything feels like I fell a little bit. When Anushka Sharma walked in, she walked thirty feet. Yeah. Not even like from the door to the mandap. It was small. It was a small. It was a small wedding, forty people. When brides walk in now, there's a five hundred meter long. Yeah, yeah, walk yeah. But you know, I captured. find that so beautiful. The the intimacy of. Uh, that people, some people choose, and of course, to each their own. I think everybody has, like you said, their own idea. Some people want to feel like Shahrukh Khan that night, and some True. people who possibly every day do feel like Shahrukh Khan just want to keep it simple. I think it's it's right. perhaps that you hit the nail on the head. Yeah, I think it. I think it's what we experience in life um, that we want a change from when we're getting married. I think if you're just surrounded by people all the time, you might want privacy I guess. and vice versa. But uh, possibly done every single spectacular wedding that all of India has been dying to watch, you know, whether it was Virat Anushka or Deepika Ranveer who recently kind of, you know, released their wedding teaser, uh, if I might say. But what has that experience been like capturing both, let's say, these like high profile celebrity weddings, but also like, you know, regular people weddings? But they're also very intimate, these yeah. weddings, the, the high profile ones we film. Most, most of the film stars, like you rightly said, they do this for a living. They they get ready every day, hair, makeup, wardrobe, surrounding them, fussing over them. So when you're getting married, you want to keep it chill. You want to keep it relaxed. You want to keep just the people you love. Both the weddings you mentioned, Anushka's and Deepika's, were both intimate, sweet, beautiful weddings with people who they were really close to, with people who they talked to every day. Yeah. They didn't call the whole world. For that, they did big reception yeah, party yeah. when they came back, to just like which all of us would do. Mm. And th their wedding was no different from how you would want to get married or how I would want to get married. Um, they have fine taste yeah. um, and they can afford cooler things. Yeah. So they did. And they look um, stunning. And of they course. look stunning. Yeah. Stunning. Deepika's red outfit, that so Bhagavati Bhavatu on the yeah. and there was like so intense. I've never seen something like that before. I get to see things I would never see. Tell us some of the most uh, amazing things you've seen that you were just like startled by or just like, oh my God, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. Um, it's usually the simple, simple things that are beautiful at a wedding. Like just the, when you get when you get a shot just right, when the light is just right, when everything comes together just right. It's never just one thing at a wedding. I realize that's like, oh my god, because the big thing is the fireworks come and go. Um, yeah. What stays is like her the timing of the beauty of things happening. Like he'll she'll look at him and say, "I love you," and you know we'll catch it. Yeah. And I have another camera somewhere, and he's caught him saying it back to her. Yeah. And just when they say that, one butterfly will go between them. Aww. And it actually happens. And sometimes just like when things like that happen, Anushka Sharma, when she throws the rice behind, and then yeah. there's one bird flies behind. It's yeah. just like, like how? Like, yeah. how does it happen? You don't time it. You just, yeah. then you know you're doing something right. You're in the right place at the right time. Yeah. The glitch in the matrix was fixed for that time. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I wanted to ask you that, of course, uh, some people want to share, um, you know, their wedding video, especially if it's like a high profile celebrity, because there's so many people who are curious about. You'd be surprised. Deepika and Ranbir didn't share it for yeah. five years. I and thought I it'd never be you, seen. How, how, how did that feel? Like, did you feel like a oh, damn? It was, it was yeah. so good. I wish they'd yeah. shared it before. Yeah. I mean, and they also have PR teams and they have like all of this and they'd be like, no, you shouldn't be putting this out there. Like, you should, it's yours. And I guess sometimes some things are so beautiful. You don't want to share it with the world. Nazar na lagi, hmm. some mums would say. And you, I get that sentiment, you know, you see the internet right now and how much hate there is and how much trolling there is and how much random shit people say just because they can't say it anonymously. Um, it's nice to keep some things like that to yourself. So I did understand the sentiment, but as a filmmaker, you want people to see your yeah. film and then you're dying inside and you'd be like, if only people knew. Yeah. You know, because it's like... How the, incredible you know, this was. How beautiful like it yeah. can be and how, how, how a wedding... Sh I, I feel like these weddings kind of made a, a statement in how weddings should be. 100%. What what we what what the general public have taken out of it and what the media have taken out of it is I think the wrong part is like it has to be opulent because none of these weddings were opulent. I can assure you I for mean, that. They were nice places, but they were small. Yeah, they were not opulent. Correct. They were small, intimate weddings where yeah. the bride and groom did what they wanted for themselves. 
I think I we can think. we can classify it as minimalistic opulence. I think opulence just objectively. Because I've seen opulence. Yeah. I'm sure you have. Uh, no, no, of course. Those not were a not fan, opulent. but you know, again, yeah. whatever suits whoever. Huh. So, I see. The thing is, I'm not. A, if I if I had the money, maybe I would want to do it. I don't know. You know, I'm very curious to know that, as you said, these are films. What you're making is pretty much like uh, a movie. You know, uh, it's just that it's not a theatrical release. It's for the people who you know have experienced that wedding, etc. How different is it from, let's say, actually shooting for a feature film or shooting for a production house? It's very different. Um, there's some the, the the film language is something that is is similar in terms of how to use music and how to use dialogue and how to use a visual and marry them together um, so you can make someone feel something that I learned from advertising brevity of expression how to say something in the smallest amount of time with the most amount of impact um, how to use stingers and things so those things are similar but. The shooting of it is completely different. A for starters, when I was, I'll give you a direct example. I'm shooting a wedding for Ye Javani Hai Diwani yeah. sequence. So there's another movie called Shiddat with Diana Penty, which is very cool. Correct. And I got uh, to shoot Vicky the Vicky Sunny, Koshal, yeah, Sunny, Sunny, Sunny Radhika, and yeah. Um, and I shot, I shot the wedding for that for that movie too, and it's amazing because I get to see the sets, I get to choose what colors you want, I get to shoot the lens, and I get to do a retake. I want the fire bigger, I want the fire smaller. Um, you can control all of these things. What color flower petals people are going to throw yeah. against what backdrop. I have no control over what I'm doing at a wedding. Yeah. I try not I to make imagine. it my memory. So I, I also like wouldn't want to ever tell people like, no, no, don't get married like this. Get married like this. You know, you see some photographers or some videographers or some designers and artists and planners who kind of put their own vision to the wedding and not let the bride and groom do what they want. Yeah. I feel like I wouldn't direct a couple at a wedding. I'll never make them stand in a pose or do something or walk in a certain way. Now go and touch his shoulder, and now turn around and look at him with love in your eyes. But they're not act. They're not models. Yeah. They're not actors. And yeah. actors who are getting married, they're not on a film set. Yeah. You know, so it's not my place to direct anybody. It's it's nicer when it's organic, and hmm. that's how moments are made. All the moments we've seen on all the videos I've ever put out. All real moments. They're not orchestrated. Hmm. Um, but not even like the slightest of, oh, wh why don't you guys just step in here maybe because the light is... I'm sure that. I try not to. Yeah. I try and be... I, the attempt is to be a fly on the wall. Wow. Um, there are some brides who want me to interact with them. So I kind of read the room. Yeah. Um, if they want me to engage with them and chat, they're chatty and they're very sweet. And, you know, they they have an impression of what they want for their wedding film. Then I I oblige them and I, I do all of that. Have you them. ever been asked to recreate like one of the celebrity weddings? Like, I have to No. I, I pick my brides and grooms also. They have to be intelligent. They have to be smart. They have to be, they have to be nice. They have yeah. to be in love. Uh, the basics have to be met. But how do you figure if they're in love or not? I meet them. I chat with them. Instinctively. Instinctively. Yeah. You kind of know. You know, you kind of know if they're in love. Hmm. It's hard to hide that, I feel. Yeah. Fair. You know? Yeah. That's true. If somebody looks at me and says, you're in love, I can't be like, no, I'm not. Like, I start blushing. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know, like, there are so many, like, these super arranged weddings also where they barely met. So, then, then what do you do there? I think that used to happen back in the day. Because I talk to all of the brides and grooms now, and then I talk to their parents, then mm -hmm. I talk to their grandparents. So the grandparents, when they met, they didn't meet. She didn't know who she was marrying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She my, just, I she just got my married. grandmom knew either. Like, she just met him once and spoken to him once. That, your grandmom's lucky. Yeah. I've had granddads who've told me, I don't know who I was marrying. My father told me, go to the village and marry her. I went to the village, she was wearing a gungat. I married her when I put it up. I was so happy she was beautiful. <laughs> I was like, thank you, Papa. <laughs> so that's granddad's story. Grandma and the, the parents' story is, ha, to her chacha knew my chacha and you know, we met yeah. for chai. I used to see her down in the building. She used to go and she used to be a very pretty girl. So I told my mother, I want to marry her and our parents spoke. We met for two days. Yeah, and, then and that was it. Ho gaya, and then two days later, this one was born. Yeah. So now, these ones, the parents make them meet. Um... But they date for a bit. They date for a bit. They suss each other out. They go out. They mm -hmm. holiday. They vacation. They go yeah. to the Maldives. They go diving. Now they don't. Now they go to Lakshwadeep and Andamans. They don't go to the Maldives anymore. Yeah. <laughs> um, nobody goes to the Maldives. Nobody goes to the Maldives anymore. <laughs> and then they go diving and they they see each other and then they meet each other and then um, then they decide. But then there's also some pressure from parents. I feel, mm. which I feel should back off a little bit because these are big decisions. And, yeah. You know. 
हाँ यू हैव टू से येस और नो यू नो देर आंसर हेज कम फ्रॉम देयर साइड वट आर यू गोइंग सो टन यू लाइक बट आई एम नॉट सो श्योर इट शुड बी अ फाइट टू टू यू हैव टू बी श्योर वेन यू आर गोइंग इन टू गेट I mean, it's a very big life decision. I I don't think you can afford to take it lightly. True. You know, it it should be well thought of. I, I mean, lots of weddings I've had to say no to because you can you get a sense of feeling this bride just wants the wedding. I don't think she understands what she's yeah. doing. Have you ever had someone who's had cold feet right at the end? No, but that would be so dramatic. Yeah. No? Oh my God! I was really hoping you'd share an anecdote. That would be so. <laughs> that would be so dramatic. <laughs> I guess I'm so expensive that if they've spent so much of money to get me, they're just like, "Fuck it, we might as well just do it." Yeah. Abi, abi, paid for it. That khaji diya hai to me as well. Go ahead and do it. No, but I think that um, you know, for me, when let's say I watch all of these videos, I think the uh, Sid Kiara wedding was also beautiful, and you know, whether it was so many of them. Of course, for us, um, we see these and we feel like, "Oh my God." This is what. Tell me something. Did any of these videos ever make you say like, "Shit, I even I want to get married." All. I. All. Uh, but truth be told, all. Uh, so you're, you're but not. But it's a not, not a lasting. Uh, oh. <laughs> then you're like, no, but I'm also happy. <laughs> and the this video is also ends. complicated. <laughs> <laughs> so for that brief moment, of course, every single time, I think when Dipika and me's video came out, like one of my other friends who's also saying this, she was just like, you know, for 24 hours, I was just like, damn. Especially the song. I think she just loved the song. Yeah. And uh, she was just like, you know. The yeah. music is another thing that I learned from film. Um, From Farah and Shah Rukh again was like they really understand cinema, um, and he said something to me once. Every memory needs a melody, and I took wow. that to heart and I use it very often. That's very beautiful, actually, and very profound. But it's true. It is true. It and, is very true. And that's how Ahi Guru was born because when when um, Deepika was walking in, Harshdeep was singing Ekonkar um, live. But yeah. you know when you sing it live and she sings it, she sings it beautifully. Incidentally, it's also Ranbir Singh's favorite prayer. Hmm. So every morning he'd wake up and play a version that she sang from a film called Rang De Basan. Correct. Yeah. Um. So that was his favorite morning routine. He'd wake up, he'd listen to that over and over again, and you know, do his do his prayer. Um. And that's what he walked into, and she sang it live. So it was very spiritual. Now to recreate sound like that live, it's hard because you know harmonium tabla doesn't really fit. Yeah. Um. A live recording. Correct. So we came back to the studio. I mean, like if we're recording it again, if you're recording this ekonkar again, then let's make it epic. Yeah. Let's add a chant to it. So yeah. we added the Wahi Guru chant to it. And yeah. I got um, Shelly Sahab, who's this very beautiful Punjabi writer in Bombay. He wrote for Rangde Basanti as mm. well, lyrics, and he wrote the lyrics for the song. And then he's like, let's come up with lines for the lava and for the palle ceremony mm. that happens in yeah. in the in the Anandkaraj. So he we recorded that too, and it just turned out it's soulful. Mohan Kanan. From the band Agni, if you remember. Yeah, them. of so, course. Mohan Kanan came and he sang. I just and I cold called these people. It's not like I knew them. Ahate is an Agni song, no? Ahate is. Yeah, Agni I love that song. Mohan Kanan's voice, mm. strong voice. So he sang. Harshdeep Kaur sang, and they were gracious. They were just so nice. They didn't know what I was doing it for. They didn't know why I was doing it. Secrecy is a big deal. I was going to ask you, how do you pull it off? That's so hard. I tell people it's a wedding. It's a do you sign wedding. NDAs? I do sign NDAs. Yeah. We do sign them, and they're very strict ones. You do yeah. them for some big ones, and then you just like. But it's also funny. Like sometimes you do a wedding for a celebrity, and you sign an NDA, and they say, "Can you leak the footage?" Really? I'm like, I'm like how? <laughs> <laughs> Can you make it look like it's a phone? And I'm like, how? <laughs> wow! You know, every day I learn yeah. something new about Bollywood and the people from Bollywood. We so had so many people who come, and you know, I'm, I'm curious. So you know, I'll ask them questions, and just about paps being called and everything. You know. Yeah, yeah, it's so intense. much of it is so staged. It's unfortunate, but I don't know. It's perhaps just a part of the game <laughs> to stay relevant, maybe. Perhaps also don't know any better. No, they they have to do what they're doing. Ha! Huh, but I was really shocked, genuinely, that I didn't know perhaps were called. Yeah, yeah. Perhaps are called. Yeah. Um, to to get to if you're going to the airport, you call the perhaps the manager will call the PR, the PR will call the perhaps, and the perhaps will come then. Imagine that. baby is gone. That would have been, it sounds bizarre to me, but again, that was we are feeding into the frenzy. It's just hmm. more of it. So, what started out this started out as a memory like no other. It's meant to get the families closer. It was none of this was meant to be uploaded. Um, when I did Anushka Sharma's film, she didn't upload it for um, a year. I for think. a year, she yeah. didn't upload it. When Diya Mirza 
got married. She didn't upload it. None of these people uploaded it for their whole. They just kept it to themselves. Um, Bipasha Basu was the first person to upload a film back then, but that too after a year, if I'm not mistaken. After we gave it to her, we gave, she only said, yeah, yeah, let's release it. But at that time, I don't think weddings were that big again. People didn't understand them. Social media wasn't huge. Um, now it's just become Now it's an monster. expectation. Now it's like, can I get the 24-hour cut, cut, please? Yes. It's so, become, we've created a monster. Yeah. Right? I tell this to my crew all the time. Like, you are to blame. Done? <laughs> Please hold yourself responsible <laughs> for the frenzy that surrounds weddings now. True that. I, th I think your name, the wedding film is now synonymous with pretty much, you know, all very aesthetically sort of short weddings. Ha, they're like, ha, aapka filmer kaun tha? It's become like the Xerox. Yeah. For, which is nice. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a okay. great accomplishment given that this is not what you set out to do. True. Then as Vishal, what according to you makes a wedding memorable? If I were to ask you for like maybe a few ingredients that would just make the perfect uh, wedding, you're, it's your wedding. It's only going to happen once. So you, uh, if you're lucky, it happens lucky, once. Unlike me, it happens twice. <laughs> only twice. Um, but if it happens, um, you want it to be special, I guess. Yeah. Um, I think for the first time I was getting married, I didn't even realize what was happening. It was just happening so quickly. But I guess now I'm doing it again. And now if I'm getting married, I'm trying to imagine what I would want. I would want everyone to have a nice time. And I, I know brides and grooms always say this to me because I ask them, what do you want out of this wedding? And it's like, I want everyone to have a nice time. I get that now. I get why. Hmm. Um, because I think the people who are involved in a love story, um, if they're there to witness it, then there's, it takes an army to make a relationship work. Two people alone, I've seen whenever it's just the two of them alone, yeah. it's very hard for it to work. You need that extra support because there are days where you don't want to choose him yeah. or you don't want to choose her. You know, you wanna, you're angry at the person. You're angry at yourself. Um, that's when you need the support around you. And I think that's why people have these weddings. To celebrate um, or to celebrate to with cele that celebrate support. To celebrate with that person and witness it and to be there and say, I saw it. And I saw the two of you commit to each other. I saw the fire, you know, I saw the holy book. Hmm. So I think that that would be the most special thing. Music obviously has has a big deal. Yeah. Because um, music makes you feel every memory does need a melody. Um, yeah. So then what plays at the wedding is 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 important you know i i feel like some people pay no importance to even lyrics of songs like i've I I've, I've literally seen brides enter at what they think is a very popular song but it's a very sad song i'm so saying, why would you me. do that and this happened to me with kiara and sid they wanted she wanted to walk into ranja and ranja is the saddest song i had ever heard hmm. and I was hearing it now when I, when she told me Ranja, like it didn't click. So I, I I heard it and I was visualizing the wedding. And as I was hearing it, now I'm like, why am I so sad? And it's a it's a beautiful haunting melody. Yeah. But it's a horribly sad song. Correct. About death and separation and you know. Yeah. And him going away and never coming back. Correct. And I'm like, ha. Huh. Yeah, we can't do that. God. But then she was insisting on doing it. So then I at least. Changed the lyrics it. and yeah. recreated it. So it was beautiful. It becomes, also, then completes the story that was left over in my mm. head. Um, the filmmaker in me was like, hey, like yeah. mini joys. Yeah. But um, I wasn't there to film that wedding. Hmm. I, I was there for the day before and we rehearsed her entry and uh, timed it. And then I played the song for her. She liked it. And I guess my job was done. And I had to leave for another wedding because all these Bollywood weddings happen very last minute. But my team filmed it and they filmed, they did an exceptional Spectacularly job. Spectacularly so. Um, I, very, again, that was one video that I think made everyone just feel like, damn. You know. It's very easy. I mean, I, let me rephrase that. It would make you very, you'd have to be a fool to get something like that wrong because they're so beautiful. They're doing things that are so beautiful. Mm. Um, the setup was really nice. The planners, Aditya Motwani, did such a good job at making sure, you know, nobody was around. Everybody was on the level below. So you get them clean. And it was nice. They, they, I was happy with the visual yeah. results of it. I, I uh, Speaking of, you said the original version of Ranja. I know someone who entered to Dua. I'm just like, no, I, this is not sounding right. Like, this just, you I know, know. I, I wish you. you understood. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> I wish. What do you do with shy uh, grooms and shy brides? Like, how do you get the best out of them? We try and stay unobtrusive. Um, okay. But mostly, I don't think shy people hire me. If they were so shy, they wouldn't want a wedding video camera guy. Um, it's, some people are not camera, they're camera conscious. It's different from being shy, I guess. Fair. Um, but I guess if they're really, really shy, they wouldn't hire me. Hmm. Um, 
and if I meet a bride and groom and one of them be like, I'm too shy, I don't want to, then I'd not do it. I'd rather be like, then don't hire us to do your wedding. I don't yeah. think it's a correct fit. Just because then there's no point us trying to do something and being in a place we don't, we, we are not needed or wanted. Yeah. Then it's just uncomfortable for everybody in the room. Mm. No wonder everyone's like, oh, they're so picky. You have to be like, you know, you have to it, make the list. It's, it's not a list as such. I mean, A, we have to be available. Of course. It has to fit the budgets. Um, our our working style and our riders have to be met because we do this day in and day out so we have to do it well mm -hmm. and not burn out and not and it has to be sustainable so then there's certain rules I have to do because you're working with people you 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 don't know how they're going to be on their wedding day so you have to be extra careful with the way you safeguard you and your crew yeah. they're young people they're experienced people they're supremely talented people working on my crew so we have to make sure everyone's well taken care but of but are, are they like super frivolous or like you know aggressive people in the i'd come across also every single mistake a wedding videographer could make i made in my first three years tell us the top three like me putting in my rider to make sure we can eat on set hmm. um i say set i mean eat at the wedding yeah. um the first wedding i did in rajasthan was at the omed bhavan in jodhpur and it's a big wedding and then they had a thing at merangal fort and it was a massive massive wedding now at the end of the wedding, we finish shooting, we're taking a break, we put the cameras down and me and my crew members went and stood in line with the plate. And this family member came up to me and been like, you can't eat from here. But who does that? That's he really did that. obnoxious. So he, then in the end, he's like, so I said, I can't eat from here. And I answered him in English and I answered him correctly. And he says, no, no, you can eat from here. Then he turned around to the guy behind him. He can't eat from here. Oh. Which was no, my crew member. So I'm like, cool. how can I eat from you? And how? So that pissed me off even more. So 100%. then I put the plate down and I got really upset. And that became a big deal. Um, and then I but realized... This is basic stuff. How, but I didn't, I didn't know that I had to put that in writing and explain it to people. And make sure it was done. Because this happens... It happened, and then after my call, it's happened a couple of times. Not once or twice. It's happened a few times. And when it happens and you have to just re reassess how you are working and what you are doing and where you are going wrong. Because then you're trying to change classism in a big way because India is very classist. Very classist. Very elitist I see it every day. and very classist. Yeah. So how do I break that? Um, that's one of the first things I learned. I think the sec my second or third big Indian wedding I shot, they had an elephant. And I was shooting the elephant. I was very excited to shoot an elephant. It was like, oh, an elephant on set. And I was like, oh, an Indian decorated and all. And then I started shooting the elephant and we were being artists and shooting the eye. And I noticed the elephant was crying. It was sobbing. And the real tears. And this I much, have a huge issue with animals being used at weddings, by the way. And that's when I realized... Like, Horses, this, this, elephants, whatever that so, might be. So that's why we stopped um, and we put it in our contract that if there's an animal, we will put our cameras down. I can't stop them from doing it. Yeah, yeah, of course. But That's I can tell them hands. that I'm not going to encourage it. Yeah, yeah. Um, so if you're doing it, there's going to be no memory of this horse because I don't want your children to do the same thing. Because well, they live by memories, right? I'm so glad. I'm so glad that, you know, you've been thoughtful enough to incorporate so these it. Are the small, I guess these are yeah. the small, small things. That I think do. it's extreme cruelty, by the way, to just have like animals with like, you know, loud Bowls, music. Fireworks, and, explosions. Uh, why would you do that? You don't need them anymore. We don't need animals to commute anymore. So I feel know? like when, 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 when um, illiterates do it, people who have not been educated do it, they don't know any better. Yeah. Um, but today, if, if people who have gone to Warwick and have gone to these places <laughs> and do it, then I'm just like, bro, what did you learn when you went to Warwick? Yeah, I agree. I, I, I completely agree. Uh, not many of my friends have done it. <laughs> we learned. See? We know better. So, I mean, these are the few things that I saw. Um, I had a couple separate before they got their wedding film. So then I changed my contract to make sure I get a 100% advance. Hmm. Um, so uh, you learn from all these mistakes. Typically, how many people are working on a wedding, let's say? It, it depends, depends on, on the scale. scale. The yeah. last wedding I went for, there were 1,600 crew members for a 500 wedding. Intense. <laughs> May I ask who it, whose it was? <laughs> One of those big NBA ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fair. So we, we shoot for all sorts of people. You know, there's like industrialists and yeah. actors, and politicians, and sports people. And, and then we shoot for normal people also. Mm. Um, Good to know. I'll keep it in mind. <laughs> they're, they're, also, they're also great like experiences. I'm sure. It's also refreshing, I'm sure, to just like have some sort of like... People keep asking. Non-performative stuff also. But right. no, actually that's... Uh, normal people are 
far more performative today. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. do some epic things, and yeah. I think the small, small details. You see the joy it brings them. I did this one run, sweet wedding, small wedding here in Delhi a few weeks ago, and I went for the men. The end was so sweet. The bride was just so happy. She was just showing me, see, see, did you play this game? And then she had a tarot card reader, and then she had the shooting thing, and then she had a pizza guy, and then she had a chart guy. They were all small things, and but then it was just the excitement of doing this all. Everything she loved is in one place, and she yeah. didn't know whether to eat the candy floss. And then I was like, I was also getting carried away. It's like, do I eat the candy floss first or do I eat the pizza, which was divine first? Or do I eat the, or I want to shoot the balloons also. And yeah. like, you know, what do you want to do? I have never been to a menu that's like that, where you shoot balloons. It was stuff. fun. It was fun. They had the yeah. toss the ring and there were all these games they were playing. And I thought it was cute only. Like uh, what was cute, what I found endearing was the bride was really happy that she got all of this. And the groom was even happier that he could get her all of this. Mm -hmm. And just seeing the two of them in that setting was nice. It was cute. It's like those grand gestures you do, you know, that you do for the person you love, yeah. you know. Your boyfriend likes something really nice, so you just buy it for him, you know, and buy him an e-bike and you'd be like, wow, that's one of those. Yeah. It's sweet. You've spoken about, of course, you know, how you started the wedding film or your first wedding and now, you know, that you're getting married again. Congratulations, firstly. Thank you. Um, tell me something. You've, of course, been through heartbreak and divorce. Um, what does love mean to you today? And and what did that heartbreak teach you? Love means to me choosing the same person every day. Mm -hmm. Even on the days you don't want to choose that person. Um, that takes strength. I didn't realize this back then. I got married because she was pregnant. We were having a child and I thought that was what we were supposed to do. I was in love with her. Yeah. She was in love with me. That much I'm certain of. Um, Sufi, my son, is too beautiful a boy to not be born out of love. So for that I'm certain. He's evident. But um, I learned that marriage takes a lot of maturity and a lot of patience, which I didn't have and she certainly didn't have. Um, it, it takes... Um, a lot of strength to be able to choose that person. And when both of us are weak and both of us are distracted, um, some people say it's not opposites. Opposites don't attract or, you know, opposites attract. I don't think it's that. Me and Nikki, my fiance, are poles apart. We're very different. I mean, we live in two separate countries. We've been brought up very differently, different cultures, different castes, different religions, different thoughts. But we still make it work. Um, and even on the days when I'm an, when I'm an ass, she chooses me. How lovely. I think that's really nice. And I can yeah. be an ass once in a while. Everyone can be an ass once in a while. It's not just you. I think everyone so, is an ass once in a while. I know. So, yeah. so that's that's love. Yeah. Um, I've seen I've seen mature love. And love changes. It evolves over time. In the beginning, there's all this fire. And there's all this. Um, and then you grow into something that you can build with someone. Um, you know, you build buildings. You know, and doing it alone is... It's, it's not nice. Yeah. Do it, but doing it with 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 the person you love and building that that's that's epic. Yeah, agree. That's very beautiful, actually. Very profound uh, thought mm -hmm. on love. Um. Okay, we're going to ask you the last question that we ask all of our guests. You're so busy. I don't know with the zillion weddings that you uh, shoot in here. What does Vishal do to unwind after hours? I love cooking. Oh I'm wow! A cook. I'm a I'm a I'm a cook. I would have. I, so my, the dream job was to open a food truck. Uh, I like making music, so that's really fun. I do consider this though. I, I think that the work I do is I don't feel like I'm working. When I'm at a wedding, I'm socializing with people, I'm meeting mm. people, I'm shooting, and shooting for me is not work. Yeah. Um, it's exciting. It's always been exciting since I was 12 years old. I was making films with my dad's camcorder in the garden, on home videos, I used to have running commentary, I used to edit them and put music and titles and it was a thing. And the family would get together and watch it. Um, so for me, even now when I'm shooting someone's wedding, I'm still that same 12 year old boy shooting and coming home and editing it and getting excited and my heart starts racing because I'm happy with what is coming. And I think that feeling, if you have, whether whether you make buildings, whether you're a doctor or whether you, it, if, if you feel like what you're doing is not work and you love doing what you do, then you can do it forever and never tire. Yeah, true. That's very true. So you cook, you make music, but you're barely ever tired because you love what you do. Yeah. Can we take that away that, from that this? Is, that is true. Okay, before you go quickly, we're going to play a game. Uh, we're very excited. You just have to say yes or no, but we're going to give you some scenarios. And uh, yeah, you don't need to name the people because you know, I love it. why would we do that? But uh, yeah, so have you ever seen a celebrity pass out at a wedding? Yes. 
Okay. Shit, I should have said we could have given names, but you wouldn't have given it to me, so it's fine. Have you ever had um, celebrities, uh, you know, not pay you on time? Yes. Wow. Interesting. Um, have you ever seen a celebrity get cold feet just before the wedding? I mean, they would go through with it, but... No, yeah. I As you said, you're to. too expensive. Yeah. <laughs> just like now, <laughs> so them to much be now. Unsure. Celebrity to for sure, no. I've huh. had brides who've had cold feet. Hmm. I've had brides who've had a panic. In my first wedding, I filmed, she had a panic attack before Intense. the wedding. A proper, legit panic attack. She had to rip her dress off. Oh, wow. This is very Sex in the City. Uh, yeah, it was, one yeah, of, yeah. So it was one of those uh, yeah. Sex in the City moments. And that, that's what I found so exciting about shooting weddings. Because it's like, oh my God, they were all sitting and praying. She was Catholic. And I'd gotten a shot of the groom's side all together. His family were from Spain. So they're all like holding hands and they're praying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And they're praying. And then they cut to the bride's house. So I was like, guys, you should say a prayer. So they also held hands and it was intense. And they were standing in a circle and they were praying. And the father was leading the prayer. and. Suddenly she starts like, I can't breathe, I can't breathe. She rips it and my hands are shaking and I'm shooting and I'm just like, what is going on? This is a wedding, this is a movie. <laughs> <laughs> and she's stunning and her sister is even more beautiful. They both like are these models, like New York type models with like green eyes and like dusky skin, like olive. And I'm like, what is going on? And the wedding happened and she was yeah. happy and everything was good. But yeah, that's intense. So yes. Interesting. Okay, have you ever um, heard like really scandalous like gossip just while being the fly on the wall that yes. you said you were? What? Okay, don't give us names, but just tell us something that was super scandalous. The bride was caught making out with one of the creative people on the shoot. Oh, wow. That the wedding, is scandalous. Sorry. You know? No, but a wedding is your shoot only, na. now the location is your set, huh. so it's okay, we don't need the you clarification, now, huh. what are you going to do? It, it, that's old how you old habits die. Yeah, yeah, of course. Okay, have, have, has anybody ever asked you, you know, delete this clip? Because, yes. Hmm, both because, because? Because? You said because? No, I was going to just say because they thought that it was inappropriate. There are lots of reasons, so yeah, if you yeah. like ask your reason, I'll tell you. So because they thought that uh, you captured something that was yes. maybe scandalous. Yes. Because they thought that uh, it was inappropriate yes. behavior because yes. somebody was too drunk. Yes. All of the above. Yes. Very interesting. So all celebrity weddings are basically like regular people weddings. Yeah. There's enough kalesh that happens. Yeah. Across. Across. Okay, perfect. I wish I could tell you names. I've done quite a, the there, there are quite a few. So there are also like a whole bunch of celebrities, you can say, who have, have shot for, um, which nobody knows I've shot for. And I can't even say I've shot for. Yeah, the NDs. Huh. But they're epic. Hmm, I get I'm to sure. I, I love my job. Genuinely. I, I, it sounds very interesting. It is very fascinating. And of course, I think that the, the, the spillover of, you know, all of your times, all of your 10 years in cinema to now doing this. There's been a death at a wedding, I feel. There has Who been died? a theft at a wedding. It was a sad story, like heart wrenchingly sad. Um, the mama's son drowned in a pool party. Oh my God. That so is... that was dramatic. The wedding still happened because it was, they, they, they went through it, but there oh, was like wow. everything was cancelled. And so that, that was the moral of the story, like That's pool parties take morbid, yeah. in control. I've had thefts at a wedding. Um, but who is the one stealing? So the seven-year-old kid came in and stole a poker or diamond necklace from the mandap. What? But what do you mean from the mandap? So, you, so, I, so, so it must have been an inside job, I guess. But someone would know. And they had kept the jewellery in one bag to give to the bride. Ooh. You know, so the one bag is kept at the mandap on the side. Wow. Because then some shit's going on. Ha, masi ko bulao, mami ko bulao. So mommy's mm -hmm. gone and she's left the mandap. She left the bag there. And in the bag is a fork. So someone knows there's a diamond. And then you can see the kid. So then the police have come to my room in the middle of the night and they're banging on my door. And I'm like, what happened? It's like, Apko, you have to come with us and you have to go down. You have to show us the footage. And I'm like, what footage? It's like the wedding. And I'm like, why? Who? Like, so then they tell us that this har was stolen from here. So we need to see the footage. So we had cameras rolling constantly. There was a Jimmy Jib crane. This is way back in the day. I was in Surat, I think. And they found the kid in the video footage and it was a seven-year-old kid who nobody knows who the kid was. He so just he dressed have, in like wedding clothes. Just dressed and he must have come in, taken the necklace and went out. And Wow. Did they manage to find the thief though? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> it's just cute. <laughs> I really don't know what happened after that. That's fair. But that thief got some bling now. <laughs> <laughs> the Surat bling. <laughs> 
Uh, thank you, Vishal. It's been an incredible chat, and it was so lovely to see you. Thank and you, buddy, uh, we hope to keep you. seeing your wonderful work and feeling like, damn, it would be so nice to yeah, yeah. have a fantastic partner and wedding. I was very excited to be here. <laughs> this is to all about Eve. Yes. Thank you.